Today we're smoking two pork shoulders, and I'm testing two different meat church rubs just to see which one I like best. So hold on to your butts, because it's time for some TWW barbecue. I'm planning on a 12 to 14 hour cook here, so I'm up bright and early at 5 a.m. But before I get my hands dirty, I need some coffee. Some delicious, life-sustaining coffee. I keep a little diamond plate sharpener in my knife drawer so that I could put a quick edge on knives just before I use them. And this little curved boning knife is great for trimming fat off of big cuts of meat. It's not a bad deal at about 13 bucks. When I open the package, I usually have the best intentions for containing all of the juices, but most of the time it just runs all over the place like this. Hey, I never said I knew what I was doing. There's really not a lot to trim off of a pork shoulder, but if I see any super thick layers of fat, I might trim those down. And any of those really loose, slippery pieces of business, I'll, I'll cut those off too, because that's gross. It's also a good idea to pat the meat dry and soak up any of those juices with some paper towels. The way I feel about fat is that anything that doesn't render is usually pretty easy to remove before serving. So if it's not overly gross, like the slimy schmutz, I just leave it. To add an extra layer of flavor and to act almost like a glue for our rub, I'll mix in some Dijon mustard and molasses at about a 50-50 ratio. Now I actually never used molasses before, but I saw it in a Rectech recipe video and thought that it seemed like a cool idea, so I'll try it out. Each shoulder gets a generous slather on all sides. And now for the rubs. One will get a liberal coating of Meat Church Honey Hog, which promises to be pretty sweet. And that's okay since my taste buds tend to favor sweet flavors on pork. Plus, the label features a pig with honey on its butt running from a swarm of bees. That's just good marketing right there. The second butt gets a coat of Meat Church Gospel. This is their all-purpose rub. Now I'll let those bad boys sit a while and fire up the smoker. Rectech makes a great pellet smoker. They also have a great cover. Maybe it's a little bit too good. This thing is about as form-fitting as 10 pounds of potatoes in a 5-pound sack. It usually takes me about 5 minutes to get this cover off. Anyway, I check for pellets and it looks like we're pretty good for now. I'm using Rectech's Ultimate Blend, which is a, a mix of red oak, white oak, and hickory. So I'll dial it in for about 260 degrees and let it warm up. And smoke means we're firing up. Now's a good time to refill the coffee and do some dad thinking. Really, I'm just thinking about how nice and quiet it is at 6 a.m. when the kids are unconscious. By the way, here's my pride and joy, my Lang Offset Cooker. We'll talk about that some other time, but today's a super busy day, and really nothing beats a pellet smoker, especially one with Wi-Fi, for convenience and accuracy. Now the Rectech comes with two probes, so I'll probe each butt. Man, I thought woodworking was full of innuendo. Notice that I did put the fat side down. You could do whatever makes the most sense to you, but I like to use the fat to protect the meat, and I put it toward the hottest part of the smoker. In this case, that's coming from below. It's now 6.30 a.m., and the cook officially begins. Something I started doing recently is journaling my cooks. You'd be surprised how much you forget just the day after a cook, let alone weeks later when you might fire up the smoker again. So write everything down, as if you're going to teach someone else how to do it. I'm still learning, and this is a great way to track my progress. Now, there really isn't much to do right now. The first three hours or so will be pretty uneventful, so it's a good time to make the mop sauce. I'm using a 50-50 mix of some apple juice that I'm stealing from the kids, and apple cider vinegar. After three hours, I'll check on the butts. They're already looking pretty good with some nice color. I'll spritz some of the mop sauce on the meat to add moisture, as well as a little bit of sugar to the surface that should, in theory, caramelize and help with bark formation. I'll spritz again every hour. After about eight and a half hours, the butts are looking pretty good. I've got one that's about 167 internal and the other is 175. I plan on wrapping these somewhere between 160 and 170-ish, so they're ready. So let's talk about wrapping. You don't have to do it. Wrapping is a tool in the arsenal. Wrapping can help you push through a stall, it can help tenderize the meat by locking in the moisture, so it's useful at this stage of the cook when the meat has pretty much taken up all the smoke that we want and we're just waiting for the meat to get super tender. On the downside, wrapping does tend to soften that beautiful bark. Some people like that, some don't. So maybe next time I'll do a pork shoulder and try it unwrapped. If you do wrap, try to get at least two layers of foil around the meat and pack that sucker nice and tight. Then throw it back on the grill, add your probes and let it roll. At this point, I'm gonna turn the temperature up to 275. 
And by the way, this isn't meant to be a rec tech commercial, but I want you to see how awesome this is. I was away from the house for most of the cook today, so I used the app to monitor everything. Right now, I'm going to use it to change the temp to 275, and I'll also raise my alarm temps for the two probes to 200. The app then gives me the usual notifications about changes in a temp and it coming up to the new temp. I do love me some fun technology. At about 5 p.m., both butts are reading the same temp, at least in the area around the probes. While my target temperature is 200 to 205 internal, I won't actually take the butts off the grill until they're probe tender. Now this shot shows what I mean by that. The smaller butt takes the probe with zero resistance. The bigger butt isn't as effortless, and you can see it grab here. When I read the temp on my probe, it's actually reading 193 degrees, so it's, you know, obviously not totally ready. The best description I've heard of the feeling of that perfect tender piece of meat is that it feels like you're plunging into room temperature butter. This is why it's good to check the temperature in multiple places, and it's also why you can't blindly trust just one temperature probe. Thankfully, the smaller butt is ready in time for dinner, so I'll take that one in the house, and I'll use the other probe in the bigger butt just to have a second data point. We'll crack that one open in a minute, but for now, let's just finish the cook. It took another two plus hours for the larger butt to be ready, and it was hovering around 200 degrees the entire time, but it's done when it's done. Now, resting is another area where you'll find lots of opinions. Rest if you want to, but I tend to agree with the folks who say that it's not totally necessary. So here's the smaller butt. This is the one that was rubbed with honey hog. Remember, at this point, the other butt is still on the smoker, so I can't actually do a side-by-side -side taste comparison, but I'm hungry, and it's dinner time, so I'm eating. Now, if you can, save those juices and mix them back into the pork. So the bone that's in this thing is pretty big, and when it pops out clean, you know you've got a nice, tender pork butt. So I'm breaking the meat apart with my hands, removing any of the nasty fat that I see as I go, and intentionally leaving the meat in larger chunks. What we don't eat for dinner tonight will be vacuum sealed and frozen or portioned out to family and friends. So it's best not to tear the crap out of it. They can always do that when they heat it up. And I actually like my pulled pork to be more chunky than shredded. Just a personal preference. The flavor is pretty good. Very sweet. The pellet smoker actually imparts a very light smoke flavor, so this is really all about the spice here. And this stuff is totally edible. It's really good. For dinner, I drizzle just a little bit of barbecue sauce on top, add some homemade slaw, and take a one-way trip to Flavortown. And this is the point where Nicole asks me if I plan to eat my entire dinner standing up in the kitchen. Speaking of Nicole, she really loves food off of the Rec Tech, primarily because she doesn't really like super heavy smoke flavor, so good. she's a happy girl. A couple hours later, when the second butt was done, I opened it up and had a little after-dinner snack. Now, I could be wrong, but taste testing something when you're not actually hungry makes you a tougher critic. And I have to say, I enjoyed the flavor of the Gospel Rub more. It's a little bit more traditional barbecue in its flavor profile, which is to be expected from an all-purpose rub. It's just more complex of a flavor and has more depth. All that said, I think I agree with the folks who layer these two rubs. You put the gospel on there as a base flavor, and then spike it with the honey hog. I think you got yourself a killer combo if you do that. Either way, both of them were pretty fantastic, and I'll wind up mixing the meat together when I portion it out into the vacuum bags. So I would love to hear from you guys. If you have some rub recommendations, tips or tricks that you use for pulled pork, there's so many ways to get the job done, so many different flavor profiles. I wanna hear about it all. Let me know about them in the comments. And be sure to subscribe if you like what we're doing here. We do meat, and sometimes vegetables, but mostly meat. Remember, it's the wood that makes it good.